Hi everyone. I have a really cool technique video for you today on watercoloring. Now, I know you're busy and I know you have a lot of things to do besides watch videos on how to learn how to stamp. So when I do my videos, a lot of times I'm going to try and pack a lot of information into a short period of time. So in this video today, I'm going to show you a few different ways to watercolor and then you can try them all. You can pick the one that you like the best, um, but that way you'll have a good knowledge of some different ways to do watercoloring. So if you take a look at these two pieces of paper I have here, you can see some examples of a couple of watercolor samples that I have done and I think they are just absolutely gorgeous and I know that you would probably love to do this too if you haven't ever tried it so let's get to it and I will show you how to do that so first the first way I am going to show you is to you, you need some watercolor paper the watercolor paper soaks up all of the water that we will be using you know no normal paper will it will bubble up and those bubbles never go away so if you are trying this out get some of our watercolor paper and i'm going to lay this on one of the stamp and pierce mats actually i'm going to grab another piece of scrap paper To lay behind that because we are going to make a small mess here so I'm going to apply my ink directly to my clear block okay this is a clear block that I would attach to the clear mount stamps or the photopolymer stamps but we are just using the block today and I'm going to use three colors I picked these three colors with the idea that maybe it would make a neat sunset scene. So my three colors are pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, and cherry cobbler. And I am just going to apply that right onto the block. You want to do the lightest color first so that if your colors overlap at all, if, if this ink pad starts to soak up some of that other ink, I want it to be lighter ink rather than darker ink. Okay, and I'm going to apply it kind of in streaks so that it's the pumpkin pie color at the top, Cajun craze in the center, and the cherry cobbler down here at the bottom. And the next thing I am going to do, I'm going to use my Stampin' Spritzer and spritz this maybe three, four, five, six, we'll do seven times. Sometimes I don't do it quite that many times and then I realize I should have a few more. All right, I'm going to press and you can see as you do this, you can see the ink and the water get into all the nooks and crannies of your piece of paper down there. So lift that up and I have excess water collecting down here on the edge I am just going to tap that on my scrap paper to try and get rid of some of it and you can see the color pattern here now I didn't get down here to the very edge but I can trim that off that's no big deal when you do this, if you end up with small white patches in here, it means that you didn't use quite enough water. So you can leave it if you like the look of it. I have some cards that I've made that way. Or you can just grab the block. You don't have to put any more ink on it. Spritz it with a couple uh, more spritzes of water and then just reapply it. And once you have enough water, it sh all, all of the color should even out like mine did here. Now here is a fun tip which I think is very very cool. Salt shaker. I'm gonna put some salt on this and let it sit and we are going to come back in a little bit and see what happened. Ooh, it's like a fun science project. What's gonna happen? 
Don't let me forget. I'm terrible at forgetting things. I have to show you that before we are done. Okay, let me clean up my block real quick. And then I am going to show you a second way to watercolor. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, you can apply the ink to the block for the technique we just did. You can apply the ink to the block in a couple of different ways. You can actually use your stamp and write markers and you can color directly on the block. So if you want to control where the ink is more than I did on this card, you, you can do that. So you can make patches, you can make it spots, but that is another way to apply the ink to your block. All right, next, I am going to show you, you can actually color directly on your watercolor paper and then apply the water afterwards. So let's try that. And I don't have any plan for this card. I'm just going to do patches. When you do this again, try and use your lightest color first. This is pink pirouette. Next, I am going to add Melon Mambo, I think. When you're choosing colors to mix with watercoloring, keep in mind you don't, if, if you remember that knowledge about the color wheel, you don't want to choose colors that are opposite on the color wheel, like orange and purple, for example, red and green. When those mix, they will probably turn brown or always turn brown. And if you want brown, that is fantastic. If you don't want brown, then you should avoid those colors. This is Tempting Turquoise. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of precise science to this. Not like that science and that science project that's sitting over here. Okay. That looks good. If there's a little bit of white, it will probably get covered up here in a moment. So you can color what you want. You could color a rainbow. You could color all kinds of things. Now keep in mind they're going to be blurred quite a bit after you add your water, but you could create some sort of scene in the background by, by using the markers on the watercolor paper. Now I am going to use another scrap piece of paper. I should have gotten some more paper. I didn't think about it. And I am going to spritz water until I see these colors start to mix together. And you can add more water, less water. It's just whatever whatever your preference is. Now I think that is starting to look pretty cool. It almost looks tie-dyed, which I have not created one before that looked quite like that. That's something that's neat is they're always one of a kind. So once again, going to get that excess water off the edge. Now people who are professionals at this typically use like some painter's tape or you can use washi tape to tape down the edges of your watercolor paper to your work surface. If you do that, it will keep it from warping like this. This doesn't really bother me. Once it is dried, I just kind of give it a little, you know, curl it back the other way and it's fine. So, but if this annoys you, keep in mind you can tape this to your work surface and it will keep it flat. So I think that looks pretty cool. We'll set that one aside somewhere, somewhere. Okay, the next technique I want to show you is with an aqua painter. And I will be showing you these more than once in my videos because I love them. 
colors I have here are Lost Lagoon, Island Indigo, and Night of Navy. And I thought maybe this would create a neat nighttime scene. So what I am going to do this time, I am going to actually basically paint the whole surface of this, my watercolor paper, with just water. I'm squeezing on my aqua painter to release the water onto the paper. Okay, once that is all covered with water, now, actually I forgot, I'm gonna squeeze these a little bit to release some ink onto the lid because that is where I want to pick up the ink from on my aqua painter. Now, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to start adding some colors. So you can do squiggles. You can do splatters. I check out my video on splatters that I did. I think splatters are fun to add to projects. Need some more water. To do this, you just make sure you have enough water in the tip here. Squeeze if you need some more and just tap it against your hand. All right, so there's Navy. Let's add some Lost Lagoon. This could potentially turn out really hideous, uh, but I will say I've created some really cool ones in the past doing this. I'll put some of that Lost Lagoon all over the place. What's neat about this is when you start working with it, it's not permanent. Whereas when you stamp an image on a piece of paper, for the most part, it's it's probably not going to change drastically after you have done this. This is kind of a work in progress. And you can add things and change things. If you don't like the color, you can actually add water and pull some of that color back away. Add some blotches here. Like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. There's some blotches. I'm probably not going to like this unless it changes terribly in the next couple of minutes. Add some more splatters because I like splatters. And my splatters are not wanting to work. I don't have enough water. There we go. All right, now, I don't love that the way it looks right now, but I have learned that if you add a greeting and maybe a ribbon and a few other things that a lot of times these turn out looking a lot neater than they do just on their own. So I wouldn't throw it away. I would probably, I'll probably turn it into something. But there is a way you can use an aqua painter and apply your color more in the areas you want it onto directly onto the paper. I'll show you another way to use these and this is actually my favorite and most practical way of using the aqua painters in my opinion. When you need to get that color out of your aqua painter you could run it under the sink or you can just Rub it on your scrap paper until all that color comes out. All right, my favorite way of using the aqua painters is to use them to color in stamped images. This image comes from the Remarkable You stamp set. In one of my introduction to stamping videos, I stamped one of these and I said, 
I hadn't used this stamp set yet and it's gorgeous. So I pulled this out again and we are going to color in this flower. And I guess we'll use Cajun Craze. I forgot to pull a color out for this. So we use Cajun Craze. Normally I would pick some kind of pink or purple, but since I don't have one laying here, we'll use this. So you just pick up some color and start painting. If you need more water, squeeze the aqua painter. If you need more ink, pick it up. If you want, as you go, your color will get lighter and lighter. And I kind of like that. So I'm going to do some more up here on the top. Now I want to get some more color again. And I want the base of the petals to be darker than the top tips. So I'll add more color down here at the bottom. I forgot to mention this is stamped on our shimmery white cardstock. This is great to use if you are stamping an image and then coloring it in or with, with the aqua painters. So it, it just works better, works better with the water than our traditional white cardstock. So the shimmery white cardstock is great to try out with this. And do I like it? Do I like it? Once again, it's kind of a work in progress, so you can keep working with it until you are happy with it. Not sure why I'm spending so much time on this. You have things to do, don't you? Okay, we're going to call that done. We're going to call that done. I think that actually looks gorgeous. And that would be beautiful on a card. So that is a great way to use your aqua painters. thought I would show you... One more example real quick using some different colors on this is a leaf from our vintage leaves stamp set again one of my other favorites and we have the coordinating leaflets framelits so that you can cut them out easily and I thought I would show an example of this so I'm going to use some pumpkin pie I don't ever practice these things ahead of time, so you, so you probably never know what you're going to see in my videos. You may see me not know what I'm doing, not have all of my colors of ink that I wanted. That's all right. That's all right. We make do. You may not have every color of ink in your craft shop, and that's all right. We make do. So this, once again, is the Cherry Cobbler, the Cajun Craze, and the Pumpkin Pie. I just love fall. I'm so excited that fall is around the corner. So I think some of these on a card would be gorgeous again. So there is another example. Let's get all of these things out of the way. And I'm going to show you some cards that I have made. Oh, that side's about as messy as the first side. I'll pull this over. Okay, here is one. This is one of my favorites. Um, and this was actually created using that salt technique. I will co go back to that here in a second. But this, I used Rich Razzleberry and Blackberry Bliss on this one. And I love it. Here is one where I colored using the markers directly onto the watercolor paper and then I spritz the water over top. I use the black stays on ink for the tree and I actually 
embossed these little flowers or snowflakes, whatever you would like to call them. I embossed them using clear embossing powder before I started with the color. So there's another one. Here is one I colored this one using the markers, little patches of some of the different brown colors that we have, and then I spritzed it with the water. So there are a couple of finished samples that I have created. Now let's bring our science project back. And this isn't completely dry, but it is dry enough to see what happens. Brush that salt off, it will come off easier if you wait until it's completely dry. But if you take a look at that, look at those cool speckles that that created. It basically just pulls some of that color out and, and creates the lighter patches. So that is very cool. And actually, I'm going to pull over. I just used this in one of my other videos. And here is one that a finished card, except it's not folded, finished card that I created using that. And I used, I think I used the same three blues that I showed a minute ago. And then I put the salt on because I thought it would make it look like it was snowing. So that is a neat way that you can use that salt technique. So, okay, I think I'm done yakking. Did you learn anything about watercoloring? I hope so. I hope so. Um, when I was looking for some information on watercoloring a couple of months ago, I just, I was watching this video and that video and all these different videos and I have to go through like 15 minutes of a video to learn whatever technique it was and I just thought it would be cool to put together a few of the different techniques into one video. So here you have it. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out my website, and do your shopping on my online store. I appreciate it, everyone. Take care.